What's up? Uh, he almost, I was going to bet him lunch, but Evan wasn't going to be here. Well, he was he was going to bet on Evan, too? Yeah. I was going to, but I, I bet on him the other day. I didn't have faith. <laughs> Man, I can make a killing on that. Wait, the discussion last night was, are you showing up? Oh, I, I absolutely don't, no, never. Did I get a good spot? <laughs> what, what, what? So, it's like the first row you approach. The I next one. Right behind one. That. <laughs> you went behind that, so on the second team? Yeah. The front row and the what back. Is that? Um, no, it's in like the first what line. Is that? Is you got the two. Is close to the Let's find out this Sunday night. Okay, so I got gotcha. you. On the right side, like three boys to go down. I got it. Perfect, thank you. Shut up! All right, so I have the homework assignment go. Huh? <laughs> what do you say? We'll find said, out this we'll Sunday. Out this Sunday night. Have you seriously not still still not seen that? Yeah, no, he hasn't. Uh. -uh. It's like eight minutes long. No, it's not. You don't. You don't even need to see the full five minutes. You need like three minutes. Just give me the. Right now, just no, it's Instant not. Santa, you cannot give. Well, so far I've seen a bunch of these Santa things, and I, they're not, they haven't been funny to me. Then you have to watch the. Then you don't understand. It's that. three minutes of your time. You it's just gotta word. commit to it and <laughs> do it right now. It's five minutes and forty-nine seconds. You don't have to watch the full five minutes and forty-nine seconds. You need like. You it's first ten time. seconds. You don't need the explanation. Just watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if I watch it, I don't find it funny, I'm giving you a quiz. I don't like this bet. <laughs> Me a quiz or everybody? Everybody a quiz. I don't like this bet. Uh, do we not get a quiz if we don't watch it? Huh? If, we, if you just don't watch it, do we for sure not get a quiz? Right, but you, ha you have to explain to me what, what, what was the funny part that I probably wasn't going to get. Well, because you the quiz? Is that the quiz? That's the quiz. <laughs> So you you said that you'll tell me Sunday night with the what am I missing? <laughs> you have to watch it in order to understand. That can't be true because yes, it really is. Because John Cena competes in WWE Superstar. Uh, okay, so that doesn't explain it at all. So so, so he does something. So he fights on yeah, Sunday no, night. No, 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 no. Well, you, just you, you, you have to watch it. John Cena prank call. Oh, it's, it. it's a prank phone it. call. It, it's a Don't ball explain ball. it. You're going to make no. him not like it. It's I'm going to not like it anyways. <laughs> no, you won't. Right. The less explanation there is, the more you will like it. No. All right. Oh. So, in the last several, you guys have lost your, uh, you, you've, you've lost, you've, I'm oh, good. <laughs> you, you've lost your, uh, your right to tell me to look at funny things since half the stuff you tell me to look at aren't that funny. What you look things at me? that people have been telling you like, to look at? All these links that that, that uh, you guys put up and stuff, I go and watch it, and it's just like stupid. Like most of them. The last Santa, the last Santa thing. Yeah, the last Santa thing you had me look at or see now, whatever is whatever is. Well, haven't seen the original one. Seen you have to see the original one for it to be funny. I've actually got to leave a little later so I can pick that up and get it filled before no. work. No. <laughs> All right. No. So homework assignment was to uh, implement the functions uh, necessary for let stars to work. Correct. Yes. All right. So we already have a let function, and this guy allows us to. Um, well, what he doesn't allow us to do is he doesn't allow us to do things like this, where we can have a variable that actually shows up later in the uh, um, uh, th that shows up later in the scope to be. Uh, used uh, earlier in the scope rather to be used later in the scope. So we're defining C is equal to 3 here. Then we're trying to define B in terms of C. Currently, this will, this will not work, correct? Okay, so um, we're going to get a fail here because C doesn't actually have a, a value associated with it when we try to look it up. All right, so how do we fix this? What's the easiest way for us to go about fixing this? Okay, so every one of these guys becomes its own scope, which seems like it's inefficient, but if we're only doing this for let expressions, not that big a deal, and we just happen to already have an extend DNV for let. Can we write that last time? Okay. 
Uh, let's go up here to this. Here's our extend env for let. This guy takes in a map expression. It's going to go through, or an app expression rather, it's going to go through and this map uh, creates a list of all the variable names. This map um, evaluates each of those uh, values, right? But what we really need to do is once we have this, we need to walk through this one uh, variable at a time, adding each one of those to our, um, to our environment. So where are we extending? Oh, here's the extend env for lambda. So we're calling extend env for lambda on each of these guys, where really what we can do is let's, well, let's see. Extend env for lambda creates a brand new extended environment. It takes a list of vars and a list of vals. So we can just call that over and over and over again on those two things so we can say define extend env for let helper and this guy is going to take a he's going to be a lambda it's going to take a list of vowels and a list of um, uh, we'll say list of vowels no, list of vars, list of, list of vowels. Low vars, low vowels. And what he's going to do is he's going to go through, these lists should have the exact same number of things in them, right? He's going to go through and he's going to extend the env for each of these. So he also needs to take in an environment. So each time through, what are we going to do? We're going to say, if null low vars, then just boil down to the current environment. Else, what are we going to do? We're going to call extend env for lambda, passing it the list version of car lovars, the list version of car low vowels, so those two lists, so a, a list of a single variable name, yeah, a list of a... Var low vowels, just so you know. So, hmm? It says var low vowels. You want it to say car low vowels. Oh, thank you. Yep. So this will boil down to a list that is just a single variable name. This will boil down to a list that is a single variable value that's currently unevaluated, right? And then... So we're going to extend that guy in this environment. Okay, so that's going to be an environment, right? That's what that's going to boil down to. And we're going to go ahead and call. Let's see, is this going to do it in the radio? Yeah, it will. We're going to ex call extend env, right? Extend env. for let helper passing it the cutter of low vars, the cutter of low vowels, and a brand new environment. Man, curd. That's weird. I've been doing that a lot lately. Something's breaking. All right, so. We'll extend our environment for uh, for let helper, passing it the rest of our list of vars, the rest of our list of vowels, as well as the environment that's already been extended with just the first element from list of vars and the first element of list of vowels. Okay. So rather than call extend env for lambda here with these two guys. We're going to call extend env for let helper. Passing it this guy, which is our list of vowels. Passing it, uh, let's see. We'll 
we're currently mapping a val expression across there, which we probably don't need to do in here. This doesn't extend env for lambda to do that. Oh, you're right, it doesn't. Well, that becomes a problem then. We need to update this a little bit. So when we extend our env for let helper, this guy right here, the uh, um, we need to evaluate the car. So that guy is going to be an expression, right? So we're going to create a list out of eval. So expr passing it that expression and the current environment. So that'll give us the value associated with that guy. Create a list out of that value. Okay. And then we're going to extend that env, which means that down here, we're not going to be um, evaluating our expressions in here, we actually just want the expression, so we don't need the second map. We're just going to map, we just want this first map, right? Basically, it's this first same guy, but it's a uh, one, two. Is that right? That gives me all of the variable names. This would give me all the variable values. So that's from two. I want to see that value real quick. So if I, how do I do a breakpoint? Oh, I got to go into bug mode. Oh, it's exp. There's my. Oh, there it is. So I have to be into bug mode running in order to set up breakpoint. Yeah. Yeah. That seems stupid. But you don't. It doesn't do anything until you push go. Oh, I, I understand. I understand. Okay. What just happened? Yeah. So when you're running in student mode, the bug just decides to go away half the time. Okay, got it. It doesn't go away in about five seconds, probably. So, good luck with that. Nah, we're good. I have faith. It might be misplaced faith, but I have it anyways. <laughs> Judging. Yes. So, I don't know how much of this is true, but I believe it. <laughs> Judging previous bets, your faith may be misplaced. Let's see. Okay, so I want to... See this. Remove pause. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's my app expression. Well, I get to see what that guy looks like. Man, this debugger is terrible. Can I start over? Let's go 
over that. I don't get to see those lines though? Well, that's just dumb. All right, we're getting out of that. We'll write our own debugging. Oh, but that thing's still there. All right, so what I want to do for right now is I want to. Well, I mean, it makes sense. You're not actually setting the variables, so it's not going to keep track of it. Well, I was hoping it would. Sh it should. Most debuggers will show you the output. Will show you the value of your different things. But, so you would think a scheme thing, since you don't set variables regularly, would show you the values of those things. So let's just see. We'll just pump out map, whatever that guy shows us. That should show us our list of. Oh, we're calling our helper right now. That's fine. Get that guy gone. Going through at the very beginning, your uh, a, a7 or a5. What about it? It's breaking up there. Oh, because I'm never getting to the extend for the. Yeah. Well, no, I should be in the extend for let. I should still be getting into this code. We're going to do this. So this will parse that expression. So we'll just fake it again. Uh, lambda, this graph. So we'll define val to be this. And then let's just print out val real quick so we can see it. And let's not run our program anymore. All right, so we want to go ahead and get to our, well, here's our first let. All right, so I want to get these guys. So the, I want the cutter, I want the cutter, I want the cutter. So car the cutter gives me the let expression, right? Cutter of val should give me just a let. Oh, that gives me, oh, it gives me just the, got it. So just the cutter of Al. Gives me this whole let expression. And then if I want, that I can get the car of the cutter of this guy should give me this. Well, actually it's supposed to be an app expression. Isn't it? Our code takes an app expression, our extend env for, so it should just be val. Okay, which means that if I map that, I should just get my list of variables. Oh, it's because it's more, let me, back it off here and look at one of our lesser lets real quick. There 
it. So val looks like this. It's an app expression whose first element is a, oh, I need to get just this. This is what the guy expects. So that's the cutter, cutter, car, the cutter, cutter. Just make sure that gives me what I think it should give me. It does. Power of the cutter cutter val should give me just a list of variables. That doesn't sound good. I think his computer died. <laughs> <laughs> What, what happened? <laughs> Dr. Knowing that, if we just witnessed that, all right. So, I'm trying to recreate what our uh, extend env for let takes, so we can make sure our helper works right. Extend env takes an app expression, and this guy right here, let me get rid of that for a second, is an app expression whose first thing is, okay, that guy is the app expression. That's what he should look like. And then what we're going to do is we're going to steal. that line from up there. We're going to paste it here. Step instead of our app expression. Oh, it's actually doing the cutter of the app expression, so it's moving past app. So this is the C D A D D R. Make sure that's a thing. It's not. No. So the coder of that should give me what I want. I should be able to throw that in here. And that should give me my list of variable names, A, B. And if I say two here, that should give me my list of values. Oh, it's not the two there, it's the two at the first part. There's my five, four. All right, so that's my list of values. So I need to go back up here. Two, one. So let me just comment these guys out for right now. Just make sure this guy runs for normal. Expression is going to come in like that. Extend env for let. So we're never even getting to
I'm going to get our helper. I'm going to delete our helper for right now because I want to roll back to what we had. I think we're actually good down there for right now. All right, so this is the version that works for the current guy. That is when our app expression looks like this. So that should give us a nine. Okay. So that guy currently works. But now if I come in here and I try to do this one, it's going to break because it's not going to be able to look up that C. Yeah. I didn't undo it yet. All right, so as we're building a let, I need to extend my environment each time. I really don't want to not use map for this. So much easier if you just set up the This is my list of variable names. This is my list of So we can't, we're calling eval expression right here over and over again, and we need to do this external to this because we need to allow the very first variable. Oh, we can use another map. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, you're what just lying. Like... It's going to be awesome. Hold on. Hold on. Your definition of awesome and mine are very different. Oh. So we want to map What do you do to map on top of that? Do you oh, like this? this is going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No. All right. So. <laughs> we did two more maps. <laughs> Um, actually, do I? I don't need two more maps. I already have the pairs, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Let's see something here. I think we can actually make this real easy. Just want to see that guy real quick. So that's that, that's that. <laughs> yeah, so every app expression has a name value pair. So when we get a let, we're actually, we peel that off and we just send this part in, right? Correct. And that guy's an app expression. And if we Really, I just want to extend the environment with this and this. So I can peel out this. So I need a function that takes something that looks like 
a let expression. and gives me and converts this guy into a list containing an A and then containing the actual expression that is A's value. So that's what I need first. And we'll write that down here just so we can experiment with it. It's going to use at least seven maps. So we're going to define val to be that then we're going to define test func to be a lambda that takes a val n. And what did we say? We wanted the car of the CADDR of that guy. Just make sure that gives me what I think it should be giving me. Oh, that's just the app expression. Yeah, this is good enough for what I was looking for. In your current extended DMV for let, if you get rid of the other map, and instead of calling extended DMV for lambda, you call an alpha function, and then you should be able to continuously build in... Um, I'm barely paying attention to you. I get it, but th this is going to be the cooler solution, and it's going to help us when we do our next one, which is the let rec. That's the problem. The let rec, where we're storing, uh, we're storing lambda procedures. It, it's going to, you're going to want this cool, impossible to read version. All right, so we have. This two guy, so every one of our variable value pairs is in an app expression. Okay, good. So rather than what I'm doing right now is I'm mapping that function across this, converting these guys into a list of our variables, right? When really they're already in a more appropriate format for me right now because I can go through and I can say extend the environment with this, extend the environment with this. Okay? So this is a list of things that I want to extend the environment with. That's what we're left with right here. So I can extend ENV. So let me just get the pieces out of this. Okay. So that's Val. So I originally want to get the, let's just create a function here, so, well, no, I don't even need a function. So for each element in value, yeah, let's, get, let's just do a function. Define test to be a lambda that takes in a list and what does it do with that list it asks the question if null lst and actually i'm gonna have it also taken in an environment boil down to the environment else we want to Actually, before I take in the environment, I'll just boil down to a true right now. So else, I want to get a list. No, I want to get um, this first part as just an A. So that's going to be the car of LST. That's going to give me this. Car of LST gives me that first element. I want to get the cutter of that element. That gives me the list containing these two lists. And then off of that, I want to get the um, car of that guy. Which is going to give me... just this piece. Make sure that's the case. I should just get that very first thing right now. So test of val 
Yeah, that gives me the bar. Okay, Put Val back out there. All right, and then I want to get um, the catter of that. Should give me just the A. And I want to make a list with that. All right, that gives me the list A. Got it. So that's my list of vars that I want. All right, now. Let me steal this real quick. gonna store that down here for right now. So this is gonna be me my list of vars. Now I need my list of vowels. So I'm gonna still take the car of the list, which is gonna be give me this guy. I'll take the cutter of him, which is gonna give me the two list. I'll take the car of the cutter of him, which will give me just this guy. And that's actually all I want. Yep, that gets me the value. My right, list of values. Okay. It's going to be glorious. All right, this is list of vowels. All right, so if I can read in, so let me, right now, I'm going to steal our extend E and B for let function. I'm just going to copy it, and we're going to rename it test so we can rewrite it down here without destroying other things. All right, like that. Uh, except we're going to call it test. All right, and we're going to pass this guy initially an app expression, so val. Um, val is an app expression, right? He is not currently. So I need to not do the cutter of this. Okay, now it's an app expression. And notice we're doing the cutters of those guys here in our uh, test function right now. So this is the kind of value that does get sent into our extend ENV for let. All right, so it looks like that. And then what am I going to do with it? Get rid of most of that junk. Okay. And let's go ahead and pass in the empty env here. So empty env for a starter environment for that. So now we're going to ask the question if null. Ooh. Expression should always be a list of expressions, right? Yeah. Do I have to pass in? We actually are going to take in the cutter of this. We'll just adjust slightly how that let works. So we'll take in the cutter for this guy. That gives us now our new thing that will still have the, that doesn't have the, I'm sorry. Cut that for right now. That's a list of expressions. So that's what we're going to send in to extend ENV for 
So basically we're sending it the same thing we're sending it now, but without the app expression there at the very beginning. So we're going to take that in and we're going to say if null, so let's call this L-O-E-X-P, list of expressions. If low exp is null, then we're just going to return the environment. Else, we're going to call test on the coder of low x along with the extend env for lambda passing it the list of vars which is, that guy's gonna have too many uh, curly braces or parentheses on it right now but we'll fix that Okay, that's our list of vars. And then our list of vals. All right, we need to change LST to low exp. And this is low exp. So that's our list of values unevaluated. This is our list of values unevaluated. And let's see, extend env for lambda. Does he do evaluation? Just need to remind myself. He does not. That's okay. So we're not just sending it the uh, list of values. We are applying, well, we're going to map even though it's only one element. Um, let's see. So we're going to we're going to map eval expression across this list of expressions in the current environment, which is going to give us another one list, but it's going to give us, it'll basically give us this list converted into just the number five for that example. All right, because we're only actually doing one thing at a time in this case. And that'll make sense when we run this here in a second. So we are extending our env for lambda with this list of a single variable name, this list of a single corresponding value, and finally, um, and this is where that uh, our, our let rec is going to come in, where this could potentially be a lambda and we don't want to touch it. That's why this is the way to do it, so we can ask the question here. So now we want to, the environment we're extending is env. So there's our extend env for lambda. Um, and then there's our calling test on the rest of that list of expressions along with the brand new environment that's been extended. And in the end, we should return just the extended environment. So if this guy works, what we should see is we should see an environment come out of this that has multiple scopes where the most local scope has the B is equal to seven which shadows the scope that has A is equal to 5, simulating if we had multiple levels of things. So we should have a two-scope environment come out of this guy. So test val empty E and B. Arguments were I need to test this line here real quick. Make sure that gives me what I thought it should have given me.
Oh, I really want to use map there, though. It's actually just an expression. It's not a list of expressions. What if we need to have an intervention with you and map? Wait a minute, I wasn't even calling map right anyways. I'm mapping this expression across. Oh, that wouldn't have worked anyways. Because eval expression takes two parameters. I would have had to do my funky lambda thing. All right, so we'll evaluate this expression in this environment, which is gonna give me an answer and I'll make a list out of that guy. So here is my new environment that has B as the more lo most local variable and A as the next most local variable. And we're calling extend D and V for lambda for each of those guys. So now I can rename this guy extend E and V for let. Well, I don't have any maps. Disappointing. Get lost. So here's our extend D and V for let. He's going to look like that. But now we need to make sure we pass the an updated version of that guy whenever we see a let we're going to pass the cutter of what we're sending now because before we were sending an app expression now we're sending in a list of vars or a list of expressions rather low exp so if it's a let expression we're passing it this guy we're actually going to give him the cutter of that guy that way he gets the right thing All right, so now, given that, I do a multi-line comment. Does that exist in here? All right, what should the output of this guy be? 14. Oh, I don't have a function called test. One moment. There's my 14. But there's no maps. I see nothing wrong with this. Hmm. Why doesn't this have many maps in it? I don't like that at all. Hmm. All right. Whatever. All right. So what we want to do next, now that we can do things like this, is we'd like to have, let's create a, a little simpler uh, expression. Can you run the parse on what you have right now? Or, um, no, never mind, never mind. I was going to see if we could print off the environment to see what the structure of it is right now. But... Oh, at the end of that? Yeah. Yeah, we can probably still pull it off. Uh, let's see if I do this. The structure should be um,
So it'll be A5 will be at the end. B7 should be right before that. C3 should be right before that. And then uh, B is whatever, well, C evaluates to 3, so 6. B is 6 before that. It should basically be a stack of tuples. So let me show you what won't work next and what we need to get to work. So first of all, let's make sure that guy still works. He does. All right. So we'll build it in this one. So let's say we want another let. And this let is going to have, um, let's see, A is a lambda x times x2. And then B is going to be A5. Well, actually, we can even go simpler initially. We'll do simpler initially. That one should just work. We're going to say that is our let expression. And we're going to execute it in the body that's A5. So basically, we're going to define a local variable named A that is a lambda. So that'll give us that variable. And then here in this app expression, we want to apply A to 5. Now, we already support this in our language, right? If I run an expression here, let's define another expression. We, we, do, we support part of this. So I can say define an expression to be a lambda x times x2 um, applied to 5. That guy will currently work. That's our 10. So we know how to apply lambdas to a, uh, um, we know how to apply lambdas to a parameter. That's what an app expression effectively is. But now what if I want to do that inside of a let? That's what we're doing up here. So this effectively does the same thing we just did, except our, uh, well actually here we can we even have it more difficult. So this guy works, but this guy will also work. Um, lambda, let me steal this lambda. It's two. So lambda a, b, a, b in that guy. So here's the Here's our app expression. It's going to take in two parameters and apply the first one to the second one. The first parameter is going to be a lambda. The second parameter is going to be a 5. So this should still give us our 10. So this is the better example because this is what, before we were directly applying the lambda to our uh, uh, parameter 5. Now what are we doing in this example? We are binding this lambda in an unevaluated form to A in our environment. That's the assignment. We had a couple of assignments ago about storing lambda expressions inside the environment. We're also binding this value 5 to a variable B inside of an environment. That's our extend DNV for lambda. That's what that guy does. And then what are we doing? We're applying whatever A boils down to to whatever B boils down to. And in this case, A boils down to a lambda expression B boils down to, in this case, a literal, so we can apply that to that. It's a var expression that boils down to a literal value, yep. All right, so this works. But now what we want to do is we want this to work inside of a let. So that's this guy right here. So we're going to 
define a single variable inside of our let here, a, and set it equal to a lambda. And all it does is whatever it takes in as a single parameter, it multiplies by 2. That's what that little lambda does. Shouldn't make a difference. Our language will support lambda significantly more complex than that. All right. But now we're storing this in a local environment. Then we're executing the body of that environment in that uh, uh, in this that new environment that was just extended for the let. So a should resolve to its lambda, and five will resolve to five, and we're going to apply that to that. So we should get a ten out of that guy. And right now this breaks. because it's trying to evaluate this guy. It's trying to evaluate our lambda. So let's go up here. And let's go to our extend env for let. And right now we are just blindly evaluating our expression in the environment here. But we want to be able to ask if that expression is a lambda expression, don't evaluate it. Otherwise, go ahead and evaluate it. So we're going to create a, lit, a list out of if kick this down a line right now just for sanity's sake. If EQ CAADR of that guy is, was it a lambda EXP? If it's one of those guys, then what are we going to do? We're going to boil down to just our lambda expression. So we're going to boil down to this guy. Otherwise, we're going to evaluate that expression, and that will become the second parameter. So we're going to create a list out of the result of this if. So the result of this if will either be an unevaluated lambda, or it will be an evaluated some other expression. This will be my list of values that I'm passing in to extend env for lambda associated with my list of vars that I originally passed in. Okay? Now, those guys, um, we know that both of these are going to be one lists. So assuming this works, now we'll be able to have a, um, lambdas defined in terms of other lambdas inside of a lead environment. So let's see if we can get this guy to do his thing. There's our 10. Let rec. Now works. Okay. So let rec became very easy um, because of the way we wrote this, even though we didn't use map, which bugs me, but whatever. All right. So let's write something more complex here then. So this is... Uh, a is lambda, that's A, B is a lambda that takes a x, y, and adds x, y together, that's what B is, and then the body of this guy is going to be Taking B, the first parameter is going to be A applied to 5. The second parameter is going to be A applied to 7. Okay, good. So A applied to 7 is 14. A applied to 5 is 10, so that should be 24 when we pass that into B. No, 
I want to say I maybe wrote this wrong. Not the code, but this. That's that. That's A. That's B. Oh, I'm missing a parenthesis. That's the end of my lettuce expression. This means I have one too many guys there. There's our 24. Okay. So, we can write pretty complex things now, right? Fair enough. Well, let's see what we can't write. So right now you're just going to try to break it and then make us... No, I know what's going to break it. Oh, okay. Yeah, remember I mentioned we're doing recursion next? I did mention that, didn't I? Right. Oh, yeah. We got distracted by all the maps. So here, well, we'll leave this cool guy right there because he is... Too cool for school, right? And let's build a... Our goal is to be able to write factorial recursively. Now, we already support ifs, correct? With operators and stuff like that. So I should be able to create a let that has a function called fact, where fact is a lambda that takes in an x. And we ask the question, if uh, what do we do we have a we have an equal, right? Yeah. Uh, equal equal is the operator. So we have equal, equal, x, 0. If that's a true statement, what do we do? Uh, and actually, it's not 1. Uh, not 0, it's 1. Return 1. Else, we want to return times x fact minus x. one and then let's take fact of four so we're defining this is effectively the factorial function isn't it that's factorial we have a lambda that takes in x as a parameter if x is equal to one boil down to one otherwise boil down to whatever x currently is, times that factorial of x minus 1. So now we have, while we're defining a variable named fact, we're using a variable named fact. Make sense? So this should not work. Infinite loop, life is dying, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Computer is about to turn into cursors. Yes. So, <laughs> how might we solve that? The problems we've tackled today are the let star problem, where the order in which functions were uh, added, uh, the order in which variables were added, uh, now makes sense where we can use earlierly defined variables within the same lead environment later on in the lead environment. Okay, so we're able to define A first and then define B in terms of A. Worked fine. We saw that that directly applied to lambdas, so we were able to, so we've already done let. That was the early one. Then we did a let star. So let star allows us to do what we just explained. And then we also did a let rec, and let rec was just an if statement after we wrote the let star. That says, oh, we're allowed to store lambdas now temporarily inside of a local environment. So what comes, what comes next? It's recursion. So now, this is almost like the let star problem, but it's more localized. This says, what if I want to define myself in terms of myself? <laughs> We're not going to do that. What do you think? What's happening in this code right now? Let's let's think about what our 
what our code is currently doing with this. So here I'll go ahead and let's let's not run the program. We'll just look at the uh, um, the the output. We'll just call parse. Uh, I'll copy it that way. I don't have to use my fingers too much. <laughs> All right, there we go. So this is. <laughs> this is terrifying. That's a level list. <laughs> so we have our let expression, and inside of our let expression, we're, we're actually defining one, one variable in our let expression. Single dude named Fact. So here's our let expression. Inside here we have our single name value pair. So here's the name of it is Fact, and here's the value. Value of that guy is slightly uh, robust. All right, <laughs> so, so that's the value of him. Um, so, what's happening when we try to store this now? We have fact. We're going to have a list of just one expression. So even though we're continually going through that list of one expression, uh, you know. Going through once is no different than going through 10 times in terms of my recursive function up top, my extend D and B for let. Same deal. All right. So the one expression we're going to go through is this guy right here. We're going to call extend D and B for lambda, passing it this. And here we're going to even steal part of this. This is. Show you what this, this is effectively what it's currently doing. Just print this out, make sure this looks right. The ribs coming out? No. <laughs> <laughs> if they are, can I watch? All right. No. So. The video is going to be here on Twitch. All right. So there's this. So that's Val. So we're going to call extend env for lambda, passing it Val. Actually, we can't pass it Val. We need to pass it the pieces that are coming out of this guy. So really, we need to. Um, you mean the ribs? Let's call extend env for let, passing it val, and passing it an empty env. Did I write the function wrong? That, that, that shouldn't have died there. Let me look at val a little closer. Yeah. Oh, that's Val. I, I, Val's not what he should be yet. You need to resize it a little bit. So we actually want. Oop. The coder of Val. Is that right? Do you want the car of the coder of Val? Well, here, let me stop calling uh, the, the, the function here first so it stops dying. Let me look at the cutter of Val here. Oh, maybe I don't want the cutter of Val. I just want Val. Oh, I actually want the list of Val. 
because this is our single app expression that is our, uh, our, our parameter list. So I want list of val because I want a list of expressions where this guy is a single, um, it's a list of one big expression. Okay. So we want val surrounded by a list. So what we get now is a variable environment named fact whose value is a list that is a lambda expression, blah, 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 that's, deter that's uh, defined in terms of a variable named fact, which we know boils down to a lambda. So now what's interesting here, and I realize we're out of time, but what's interesting here is that our let is doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's that our interpreter doesn't know how to handle recursive calls. Make sense? For homework. I hate you. <laughs> for homework, implement recursion into the interpreter. It's not as bad as you think. No, I think it is. It's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'll um, I'll leave this val thing down here for right now. That way you can see what environment extend the NB for let produces, proving to yourself that it is the correct environment. What I might encourage you to do is practice calling eval environment or eval expression in this new environment we just created to see where it's breaking down. All right, I'll put this up on GitHub. And I'll put the assignment up. Yeah, I